director of the Personal Defense Network. As a firearms expert, he developed the School Attacker Response Course and teaches thousands of students and teachers for free. And, and Mr. Pincus, thanks for, for being with us. The fact that you are needed, once again, what does that say about where we are? Well, the evil exists, you know, and, and it's today is a tragic day today. And the numbers keep going up. Um, I was just in Uvalde, Texas, uh, about four months ago. Uh, great little Texas town. Uh, you know, I, I didn't get to know very many people there, but I met some great people. And I, and I feel for them as a father, you know, I've got a seven year old. Uh, I have a 27 year old. I have a six year old granddaughter. How I talk to my kids about these things as not as expert, but as a father, you know, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Um, what, what, what I'm thinking about is, is how we as parents need to be thinking about talking to our kids, not just about the stats and not just about the numbers and not just about the tragedy, but really about the preparation, um, the confidence that comes from preparation and the things that we can do to not only prevent these events, and many of them are very preventable, but the ones that aren't because evil exists and we could be visited by that evil. Uh, I, I think that's what we have to remember is that we need to also think about how we prepare ourselves and our children for uh, that inevitable confrontation that, that is going to come again, um, hopefully not to us, but to someone. Mr. Pincus, there was a generation that grew up with stop, drop and roll because we were worried that we might burn ourselves. And then there were those that duck and cover because we were worried about the threat of a nuclear holocaust uh, during the Cold War. But now we're teaching our children to get small if there's an attacker. We're teaching children now how to solve a problem that society doesn't seem to be able to solve. Is this an unsolvable problem, the fact that we need to teach children what to do in the event that something bad happens to them? I, I do. Again, as I, as I said, I, I think evil exists. Now, again, this isn't running from the responsibility that we all have. Um, you know, I think I, I just put out an article two days ago that the number one responsibility that firearms owners have is to prevent unauthorized access to our firearms. And, and that may also mean that we take steps to intervene when friends or family are those people that shouldn't have access to firearms. And, and we don't know the details of this case, but from what I'm hearing recently, it sounds like the grandmother, uh, maybe just at the last minute, was trying to prevent this tragedy from happening. And, and the question always is, what else could have been done? But in terms of preparing our kids and ourselves to face violence, uh, whether it whether it's a fire, stop, drop and roll, whether it's a, a, a nuclear attack, uh, quite frankly, you know, the duck and cover um, is about as good against a nuclear attack as make yourself small um, during an active killer event at a school. And, and that's why we've seen an evolution in this country to the run, hide, fight approach as opposed to just lockdown. Um, and, and those techniques are what we teach in the school attacker response course. And quite frankly, I believe that when we teach children to be prepared to face violence, we work against violence because it means that the bullies, um, the violent killers, uh, the evil, the predators will realize that, that we have a prepared society to defend ourselves and defend one another. And I, so I do think that there is positive that comes from the experience. And again, being aware of the problem, and, and this is still an incredibly rare event, being aware of the problem and how to deal with it shouldn't cause more fear. I heard one of the earlier guests talking about that, you know, the, the drills themselves are traumatizing children. Not if they're presented the right way, they shouldn't be. Mr. Pincus, both sides are going to go into their silos on this. One side's going to say we need more gun control. The other side's going to say we need mental health. I go back far enough to remember where, uh, Guns don't kill people, people do. The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Now we're to the point where we have 400 million firearms in circulation in this country. That's more than people in this country. When as a society does the gun itself become the problem? I don't think the gun itself is the problem. I don't think the gun itself becomes the problem. I, I think it's, it's a sad thought that we would turn away from people. Uh, and turn away from the reality and, and whether the argument, it's, it's interesting when you said, you know, some people are going to call for more gun control and other people are going to call for mental health. I hope that the insinuation or the, the, the perception out there is that somehow calling for proactive mental health and, and more uh, effective mental health care in this country is, is supposed to be a distraction. There are people who will call for more teachers to be armed. There are people who will call for more guns to, to be ready to fight back. Um, I think that all people should have the option of being armed if they're willing to take on that responsibility and be trained to do it, including teachers, if they want to. I don't believe in arming teachers as a proactive measure, but allowing teachers to be armed. Having said that, uh, the, the idea that mental health should just be a talking point or a, or a political piece of a puzzle piece, 
I really, I, that bothers me. Um, I'm a, I sit on the board of an organization called Walk the Talk America that um, tries to reduce any negative outcome uh, at the intersection of mental health crises and firearms. And that, that includes the, the judgment issues that happen with people suffering from dementia who have guns. It includes the, the suicides, obviously, which are the number one cause of death involving firearms in our country. Uh, more than half of the deaths involving firearms in our country are, are suicides. Uh, far too many of them, obviously, are gun owners, people who were uh, perfectly fine and responsible with their guns that run into a mental health I gotta, tragedy I gotta and take push, their own lives. The, the real yeah, I got to push back. I got to push back on something that you said, which is you don't think the guns are part of the problem. So let me ask the question this way. Well, why that, didn't we have wait a minute? Wait a minute. Why didn't we have as many killings when we had fewer guns? We probably had better mental health care too, right? If we want to go back to that point, there, there's been there's been an incredible degradation of our mental health capabilities in this country over the last years. There's been an incredible uptick in interpersonal violence. Um, domestic violence has been a, something that we paid more attention to, talked more about over the last generation, but it's still a very real violence, and there's been an increase in that violence in in many ways. And, and it's not just against women; it's also against men. And family, household violence, interpersonal violence, murders are far more likely to happen at the hands of someone that the deceased knew and trusted prior to the attack than they are uh, in a mass killing event. So, what I, again? I realize that it's it's completely disingenuous to suggest that we shouldn't be talking about guns at all. But when we talk about guns, we need to be talking about responsible gun ownership. We need to be remember, we need to always remember that the Second Amendment protects our right to keep and bear arms. Uh, that just as any other civil right, we shouldn't have that infringed yep. because someone else didn't exercise it responsibly or well. So gonna, again, it, it, dude, I don't think guns are the problem. I don't think we should be thinking about getting to a point where guns are the problem. Um, Some people are the problem, and interacting with those people in a, in a better, more proactive way, helping people uh, that, that are in crisis, um, helping the authorities find out when people are violent. We're gonna, but that doesn't mean restricting the rights of people who have shown none of those tendencies. And, and in fact, the hundred over 100 million gonna, people, as you pointed have out, to leave it responsibly there. own over 400 we're, million guns. We're going to have to leave it there because I guarantee you there's an argument out there on the other side. Rob Pincus is the Personal Defense Network Executive Director. Rob, as always, thank you very much for your expertise tonight. Thank you.